Hello guys and have a happy new year. It's 2019 and I just want to say I uh, hope you have a great new year. Um, in this video I wish to address scammers on dating sites. I did say I would expand on this subject and I hope this video is informative. So there are so many different types of scams on dating sites. It's, it's literally unbelievable and it's not the dating site's fault really. These people are scumbags and they will basically set up a, a fake profile. Typically the profile will be very bare with very little information on it. Um, they'll probably be, be based in Africa more than likely but you will occasionally get um, scammers from different parts of the world. And um, the different scams they employ are varied and they're, they're typically called um, romance scams. And what I mean by that is they will try and convince you to develop feelings for them and then hit you with a problem. And that problem will, be, will require you to send them money. And it's that simple. Um, but the way they um, get into people's minds and hearts, you could say, is they play a game that runs for a very long time. And some, I've known some scammers to be talking to some people as long as two years and that's a long time before they hit them with a scam so let's talk about the actual scam what they do well they can come up with many excuses but normally it's an elaborate story um, and an examples I can tell you that I've heard of is um, basically um, you know a, a family member has died or they've got brain cancer or they've got a brain tumor needs to be removed I've heard of um, uh, you know people having financial difficulty or or say um, a gang is after them trying to kill them. Um, literally anything under the sun. Um, the, the main the main ones I hear of on a regular basis tend to be um, that they're, they're stranded somewhere. Um, they need to pay the hotel bill. The hotel's taking their passport away until they pay the bill and it's up to you to help them pay that bill. Um, the, the other ones tend to be that they want to come and see you but they can't afford the travel, uh, you know, the air ticket. So they ask you to pay for that. And before you know it, um, some people can be quite gullible and some of you guys out there watching this video might think um, they're gullible, they deserve everything they get. And you could say you have a point. However, if you've been talking to someone for a very, very long time, you develop a bit of a trust. And that's where it is. That's why most dating sites have a disclaimer now that say, if you um, get talking to someone, um, never send money to them until you've met them in person. And they have that disclaimer on their site. And, and it actually really makes me angry when they have this disclaimer. Because they should be the ones policing these people. It's their site. They're putting you in danger, in effect. Um, they're exposing you to that danger. It's their website at the end of the day. You wouldn't be in that position if the dating site um, didn't police it more rigorously. And personally, I think they could do that quite easily by checking people's um, ID, for example, asking for a, a picture of their ID and verifying their IP address. So if they set up a profile that says they live in the UK, right, or they live in America or they live in Germany, right, um, they should be checking their IP address and if it doesn't match, they should get an automatic ban completely, straight away. Then the person on the website isn't exposed because what, how these date, the date and site profiles are actually um, deleted is because members of the public that are actually on the site get a message and eventually they start asking for money and they report that person to the website and the website deletes them. So it's not proactive on their side, it's act actually reactive to people making a complaint. But by then, some people have exchanged email addresses, phone numbers and then they're, they're more or less in, in, in a situation where they're in a deep communication and you might think they're gullible and you might think it's quite sad that they're giving out thousands of pounds but I encourage you to watch 
uh, Dr. Phil, who's actually um, a host of a TV programme in America. And he's had a few people on who have actually divvied out up to half a million. And I know a few um, Australian um, documentaries were based on some Australian women that had done a similar thing. And in effect, remortgaged their house, sending money to these people. Now, you might think they're stupid, it's their fault for doing that, they shouldn't be so daft. And these scammers are, in effect, also ripping off um, their children because they would inherit the house. But because they've had to literally borrow all this money and, and they're more or less basically giving their money away to these people, um, they've robbed their children of their inheritance. Um, normally, the, the you know, children are extremely angry with their parents to a point where it just completely destroys their relationship with their parents because they feel like they've um, disinherited the, in, them from their inheritance they would get, you know. Because at the end of the day, when you die, you, you leave your house that you've m mainly paid for most of your life, and that goes to your kids. And, you know, if you've just got more than one child, it gets sold and, you know, it gets split between your kids and they go off and put it towards buying a house or something like that. And that's what happens with when, when, when you, you leave your house when you die. You see, you may have been divorced and you may be lonely and your kids have left the house and someone sends you a message on a dating site and you're thinking, oh, they look nice. And you don't know if that person's a fake person, but you being um, an honest person, you assume they're being honest about who they are. It's been proven that on a lot of these sites that the uh, photos are actually stolen from model sites. Um, so the person that you see in, in the picture um, isn't necessarily the person you think you're talking to. I will tell you a story that I was talking to a woman that said she lived in Africa. All right, fair enough, I accepted that. She's living in Africa. Um, I wasn't really seriously interested in her, but I thought I'd talk to her for a little while. And then I said, I'd be interested in seeing what you look like. And they'd be saying, and they said to me, oh, I'm not sure you would like me, blah, blah, blah. And for some bizarre reason, um, I think this was on Yahoo Messenger, because we were talking on there at the time. And suddenly um, their webcam turned on and I saw this black dude. So I said to him, I can see you. And he looked at the webcam and he looked back at the screen and then he looked back at the webcam and then back at the screen and then turned it off um, and then I heard nothing from him after that <laughs> so I caught him out there um, so it's not always the case though that because it's very possible you might have um, a female scammer pretending to be a man as well and I do appreciate and acknowledge that uh, women get targeted just as much as men and you know you can look at the uh, NBC and uh, BBC documentaries on this subject uh, check that on YouTube do a search and that those will come up and encourage you to watch them and have a look it's very plain what they're doing and cross-border police forces have been involved in trying to catch these people and some of them have been caught you know in all fairness the Nigerian police force and the Ghanaian police force have been trying to crack down on this. It's important to note though in Nigeria it's their third biggest industry which is trying to scam Westerners. Um, it's quite sad that is because it is ruining the reputation of that country. Um, in Nigeria um, a song has actually been made celebrating that uh, they're actually ripping Westerners off. Um, I think it's called I Chop Your Dollar. Please do a search about it. You might want to watch it. If I'm honest with you, it's quite a good song, quite catchy. Um, but the fact it, that it's celebrating scamming white people, um, and I'm not just saying it's going to be white, white people if, before you start banging on about the race card, because I know um, black people in, in the UK and America have been caught out as well. So. The, the reason these scammers get away with it is because it's cross-border. They think they can get away with it. 
But I think at some point in the future, uh, there may be a global government at some point. Or, or there may be some sort of global police force set up because of the internet that is global. Then these people will not escape justice. In conclusion, I feel it's the responsibility of the dating sites to be policing these scammers on their sites. Because, despite what you think about people being gullible and stupid for, you know, sending money to people, there's one thing you need to say to yourself. Would they have been put in that position in the first place if the dating sites policed these um, scammers that get onto their sites? I see it every single week. I see hundreds of profiles get deleted on a regular basis. Um, regularly I receive messages and within the space of 10 minutes their profile doesn't exist anymore. That says to me these dating sites have an epidemic on their hands and it is seriously affecting their ability to provide a service to people on these dating sites. Um, I think it's got to the point where there's, so, there's more scammers on these dating sites than there is even normal profiles. Now, in my previous video, please check that out, I talked about how dating sites operate and how they use some disgraceful practices to encourage people to sign up. Please watch that and check it out. But I did touch lightly on scammers. This video is more de dedicated to what they do. Um, and they do get caught eventually if they do it enough. So the other scam that has come to light, which is quite recent if I'm honest with you, is the webcam scam. And what that is, is you know, you want to talk to the person you're talking to and you want to see that if they're real. So you'll do a webcam chat. And unfortunately, you may see a half naked woman in front of you and she may encourage you to get naked, something like that. And um, before you know it, she, she's turned around and said to you, she's recorded your uh, experience. And this does happen to people in general. And some people have committed suicide because what the scammer knows is they know your full name probably by then because you may have it on your Skype logon details. Um, so in terms of protecting yourself, I recommend you use um, some sort of username, not use your real name. Because if they've got your real name, they can go onto Facebook and then contact your family and friends and send that video they've recorded of you revealing yourself and they will blackmail you. Police advice on this is not to rise to it, I'd ignore it, um, I'd admit, ad you know, tell your friends about what happened, hopefully they'll be understanding and same goes for your relatives. Um, but that's what they play on. They in play on your embarrassment. You don't want them to see you doing whatever on video. And um, that's why they try and blackmail you. But the thing is, they won't just stop blackmailing you once. They'll keep doing it over and over again. This is the typical um, blackmailer, the scumbag. So, you know, you're be better off just admitting it and, uh, you know, just, you know, accepting what you've done is stupid and not do it again. Um, this didn't happen um, a few years ago, but it's become more of a, a new scam. And this is what they do, these scammers. They look for new ways of ripping you off. Um, and when they realise one avenue has been cut, because people are becoming savvy with this. Um, you know, I think people are becoming less naive, becoming more knowledgeable, realising that these scumbags are out there. And when someone starts asking for money, such as the lottery scam that you see through email quite often, um, people are realising it's fake, not, not to even acknowledge it. Um, and then they come up with another way, such as this. So there are so many scammers out there doing so many different things to try and rip you off. And they try and play on you as well. And then they guilt trip you. And then they try and, uh, you know, embarrass you. So, in conclusion, when it, when it comes to scammers, um, some of the clues are, such as their profiles, is if they try and give you their phone number straight away or their email address, 
all their profile is pretty much blank um, and it just tells you more or less what country they're in and their picture is a bit you know pixelated or very small and you can't make them out very well um, those profiles are probably pretty much to you should avoid them or another test is just wait you know on the site and give that that profile um, a couple of weeks or months to see if it's still there um, and if it vanishes then you know it was a scammer because someone's probably complained about them at some point because it won't just be you they're targeting they're targeting hundreds if not thousands of people and you know this is what they play on um, also English if they're using broken English which is really poorly written um, or they're using some sort of Google Translator which is pretty basic um, you can pretty much gather that they're probably not genuine people um, and I just hope this little bit of advice, bit of a rant you could say, about these scumbags because um, people have committed suicide and killed themselves over this. Um, children of the people who have committed suicide have lost parents. They've lost uh, their inheritance in many cases. Um, again, just watch uh, documentaries by uh, NBC, BBC. So in terms of um, the scammers, they actually have been featured by the BBC, NBC, uh, the Jeremy Kyle show, which is a, a, sh a show based in the UK, and Dr Phil, which is a US pro uh, show as well, um, where they feature these scammers and how they've literally destroyed uh, a person, destroyed uh, their children's inheritance and their trust between, you know, obviously the children and their parents. Um, and, and in some cases, you know, they've lost parents completely because they've committed suicide. Um, so I highly recommend that you have a look at those uh, shows and documentaries um, just to see and educate yourself because the whole point of this video is to try and educate everyone out there about the dangers of even talking to these scammers. And this is another, this is a message to the day insights. You put people, you put people in these positions. It is your fault it happens. And you know what? I think a group of people that have been victims of this should um, band together and take legal action against these data sites and say, it's your fault I was put in that position. I want you to compensate me. Because I think it's very important that that happens. So this video has been a, a general informative video about scammers from various sources that are out there uh, online people I've talked to um, and people that have been on television programs and I just want to say for those people that have been affected um, try and get on with your life um, and you know go and meet people in bars and clubs in your country and uh, Try and avoid people internationally or on chat rooms or on dating sites that are in other countries. Because the best way you can keep yourself safe is to meet people in person. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.